The Tortured Poets Department, an anthology of new works that reflect events, opinions, and sentiments from a fleeting and fantastical moment in time, one that both sensational and sorrowful in equal measure, yada, yada, yada. Hello, my people, what are we doing today? Today we're checking out part two. Adi, this woman never ceases to surprise me. A 2 a.m. version? We should have known from the peace signs and the twos. Her favorite number is 13. Where the hell did the two come from? 2 a.m., we've got another version. The Torture Poets Department, the anthology. Let's begin. Subscribe if you're new here, like the video, check out the Patreon for all the bonus tracks. No, the bonus tracks that are on the like vinyl variants will not be in this video. I'm saving those exclusively for my patrons. So go and sign up, link down below and in the pinned description. What? You know what I meant. Pinned comment and in the description, link to the Patreon for exclusive content, which is the bonus tracks from the vinyls. Um, the Albatraz, the Bolter, and something else. I think the Black Dog, which is the first song from the extended album. Anyways, let's get right into it. This album has my emotions up and down. I am emotionally drained and I cannot, I'm an empath, so I can't imagine how Taylor Swift was feeling as JoJo was being a ho-ho in these streets of Florida. Anyways, here we go. Like the video if you haven't yet. First up, again, we're gonna be skipping the Black Dog because that's gonna be on Patreon. We're gonna go into track two, which is I'm gonna get you back. No spaces in sight. This is gonna be more unhinged than the first version. You can just tell from the titles. Miss Girl is manic. Here we go. Okay, we still have Jack Antonoff, I guess. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. Fly like a short skirt, the one that fits me like skin. Oh, uh, Lavender Haze again? Did your research, you knew the price going in. And I'll tell you one thing, honey. I can tell when somebody still wants me. Come, come. Uh. Standing at the bar like something's funny. Bubbly. Once you fix your face, I'm going in. She's a temptress this time. Whether I'm gonna be your wife or gonna smash up your white guy. Haven't decided yet, but I'm gonna get you back. Whether I'm gonna curse you out or Take you back to my house, I haven't decided yet, but I'm gonna get you back. Everyone, everyone just, just, just look away. Just look away. That friend who keeps going back to that dusty man, you don't know what she sees in him, but she keeps going back. You have no choice but to just support and be there. <sighs> he has a typewriter, Taylor. I thought we all agreed he was a loser. Anyways. She wants to get him back, at least in this song. But we have Travis Kelsey now. Thank God for that football player. Yeah, cut the beat because we do care what he did. He cheated in Florida. Send him packing, Taylor. Oh, she deserves better than some... Anyway, the smallest man in the world, or whoever lived, whatever she said. You deserve better than that. Small talk, big love. Act like I don't care what you did. I'm an Aston Martin. when you're still <laughs> she said i could be the one to leave you high and dry but i love you ah! taylor she doesn't have it she doesn't have it in her to be like the mean um she's not a nonchalant person at all like at all what's that song by um chapel rowan casual she's not casual she's not nonchalant 
She wears her feelings on her face, in her words, in her songs, in her music. She is very direct and explicit about how she feels in situations and about people. Ugh. I feel bad. Like, she wears her heart on her sleeve, which makes it so vulnerable to be broken. And leave you like a dumb house party Or I might just love you till the end Ugh. Whether I'm gonna be your wife or Gonna smash up your white guy Haven't decided yet But I'm gonna get you back Whether I'm gonna flip you off or Pull you into the closet Haven't Ugh. decided yet But I'm gonna get you back I feel like this entire song is just her wishing it into existence. Like, there's no spaces in the title because she's losing her mind. Like, she's so crazy and obsessed with this dude and getting him back that she's not thinking rationally. The fact that you're basically having to come up with these scenarios in your head and beg for him to even give you any attention at this house party gives you your answer. Girl, oh, Taylor, stand up, please. Say you got somebody, I'll say I got someone too. Even if it's handcuffed, I'm leaving here with you. Ah! will be by on Harris, fading into vain. Grab all the pieces, but still wanna play the game. So oh, that was nice. You, but I love you just the same. Pick your poison, babe. I'm poison either way. Whether I'm gonna be your wife or gonna smash up your bike, I haven't decided what the heck, yet. Jack? But I'm gonna get you back. Whether I'm gonna curse you out or take you back to my house, I haven't decided yet. But I'm gonna get you back. I like that song, but it makes me think like I'm watching a teenage or YA rom-com where the girl is like in love with the teenage jock or the popular kid and she's imagining them like making out in the closet, but he's the popular guy. He doesn't want me. He has like options. I don't know. I felt like it, it felt very high school to me. Uh, it's still a bop though. Don't get me wrong, but it's like Taylor. Move on from Jojo, please. I know. I know you dedicated so much time and so much of yourself to this man. But he, you, you've told us through your writing at this point that he did not deserve you and he was not even the best partner. So please, I'm, uh, and it's so hard again because like, you can hear how much she loved him. But at, at a certain point, even I'm not even really talking about Taylor anymore. It's more like, just in general with people in these situations, you have to respect yourself and love yourself enough to know that you deserve better than what this person is giving you. God. Anyways, after that, we would have the Albatross, but again, that's a bonus track and we're going to react to it exclusively on Patreon. So we're going to skip over to Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus. Jesus. Who are these people? Chloe, Sam, Sophia, Marcus. It's given Betty. You hologram stumbled into my apartment, hands in the hair of somebody in darkness named Chloe or Sam or Sophia or oh. Marcus. Oh, oh, your hologram stumbled into my apartment. Hand in the hair of somebody in darkness. Hands in the what the hands in the hair of somebody in darkness named Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus. Okay. I just watched it happen as the decade would play us for fools, and you saw my bones out with somebody new who seemed like he would have bullied you in school, ah! and you <laughs> just watched it happen. A Travis Kelsey versus. Jojo, Jell Allen way. Yeah, I'm going for Muscle Man. If you wanna break my cold, cold heart, just say I loved you the way that you were. If you Ow. wanna tear my world apart, just say you've always won. 
some things that I can't unabsorb. You turned me into an idea of sorts. You needed me, but you needed drugs more, and I couldn't watch it happen. So there, there was so much going on behind the scenes. This guy wasn't even in a, any position to be in a relationship, let alone marry her. I changed into goddesses, villains and fools. Changed plans and lovers and outfits and rules. All too out. That's crazy. So again, with his mood swings and his different feelings, she had to morph into all these different things. One minute she's a goddess, one minute she's the villain, she's the idiot. Then you're changing, oh, we're gonna get married, have kids, now we're in a relationship, we're not in a relationship, all the rules that she had to live by to be with you, um, we can be out in public, I don't want to go to your events, da 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 like, whiplash. From my desertion of you, and you just watched it. they were together for so long six seven years through her 20s again she said he took all her like young good years i crashed into you like so many wrecks do to impaired by my youth to know what to do so if i sell my apartment and you have some kids with an internet starlet will that make your memory fade from this scarlet maroon like you're telling me Midnight's Maroon? What? When I saw you, da -da, I was dancing in, in New York. No shoes. Well, it checks out. Sell her apartment. The apartment in New York. Scarlet Maroon. Hello, Maroon from Midnight's. Maroon's about Joe. When the morning came, we could tell how they end up on the door and knew what you say. Got roommates, hands, and thoughts, and rosé. That's how. It, 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 all, it all makes sense. The alcoholism, the New York. I was dancing in New York. Dancing. The burgundy on my t shirt when you smash your blind onto me and now my blush to my and so scarlet and. Ooh, it's a real and legacy. I'm just going on a maroon spiral here. But no, their relationship has been ending for a minute. Jesus. They, shit, that, it must have been drug out. Which makes it even, like, more painful and worse. Their, the ending of their relationship. Never happened, could it be enough to just float in your orbit? Can we watch our phantoms like watching wild horses? Cooler and again, she keeps talking about their ghosts. What, what did she say? It was one of the songs from earlier in the album about the ghosts having secondhand embarrassment from watching her cry in her bed and not being able to get up. And now again, she's mentioning the phantoms, the ghosts of them. In theory, but not if you force it to be. It just didn't happen. So if you want to break my cold, cold heart, say you love
Her? Oh, well, I always wonder. I feel like this album is just gonna have to be the closure and acceptance that Taylor, I guess, wanted in the past from Joe. Because, yeah, if you don't, like, close the chapter for yourself, you're always gonna wonder, I think. I think you're never gonna feel good until you make yourself feel good. Or, like, form some sort of conclusion for yourself. How did it end? Wait, I, I thought we were gonna get reputation drama and, uh, like, Where's the reputation energy? I'm just sad. Piano. A ballad. We hereby conduct this postmortem. He was a hot house flower to my outdoorsman. Our maladies were such we could not cure them. So the postmortem, the end of their relationship, their maladies, I don't know what it means specifically, but context clues. I'd say all the issues they had in their relationship. Let's see, maladies. Hey Clara, maladies um, definition. A disease or ailment. Yeah, so the issues they had. And so a touch that was my birthright became foreign. Boom, boom. That's crazy. That's like, I would say that's even stronger than to say they were soulmates. My, your touch was my birthright. Uh, if someone said that about me, on my knees. Right became foreign. Come one, come all. This whole section now, the second verse, she's like embarrassed, but also I would say envious of some of the other people in relationships. But she's embarrassed by people perceiving or seeing that their relationship failed. out here looking like a scholarly whiz Taylor deprived or robbed of the possession or use of something in context leaving me bereft and reeling huh my beloved ghost and me sitting in a tree d-y-i-n-g oh my god I hope her 
friends are close because if I took a shot like she does every time she's mentioned death or dying I'd have alcohol poisoning by now with this album it's Verse 2, how she was embarrassed by everyone like seeing it, and now the chorus is calling everyone to come watch the spectacle. Oh my god. No, this breakup really, the whole point of this album is just that the breakup did a huge number on her. On her happiness, her self-confidence, her outlook on love, her outlook on life, her outlook on herself. Clara Bow. This whole album is edge, so what do you mean I'm Taylor Swift, she has no edge. I'm the new Taylor Swift like in Clara Bow. Anyway, um, next up we have So High School. reminds me of those classic um like reality tv intro songs uh, or when there's a transitional moment if you're watching like a 2000 like if you're watching the hills or something or, or one of those type of shows from the 2000s or 90s like it's it's one of those old rock songs like you can't tell me you can't imagine like a little disney character looking over and just smiling as their name appears in the credits with this song Okay, but why is this my favorite song so far from the freaking whole album? I, no, it's not even that. I think this is just the first song that's made me feel happy. Where's that one that she's, she was laughing about being miserable? That one had me contemplating life and feeling gaslit. But this one just feels genuinely happy. So high school, I feel like this is about now her relationship with Travis Kelsey and how she has hope again for love. This is the second time she's left me speechless with some explicit shit. It was it, it was when she said something about like the 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 sheets are ablaze or something like that. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. 
about Travis Kelsey. Absolutely. Touch me while your boys what? Your what? Oh my god, Taylor. Travis, you got this woman sprung. Aw, I feel like that's probably an inside joke they have, but that's so true, because homie went to the heiress to her with that number on her bracelet and gave it to her. Or didn't give it to her, but got her in the end anyway. You knew what you wanted and boy you got her. Period. I feel like laughing in the middle of practice to that impression Crow's feet, crinkling eye. Aww. Oh, it's it's she feels like she's sixteen again. Cause the love is so fun and exciting and she's so sprung on this dude like she's 16 like a, a teenager we, oh my god it took us fucking 40 songs to finally be happy 40 songs of torture from joe joe to finally have crinkled eyes and a jughead football player on the chiefs and we feel like we're back in high school finally Sweet 16. Yeah, this song wasn't for us. This song was for um, Travis Kelsey. She just let us listen to it, but this song was dedicated to Travis. Oh, oh my God. We're finally happy. This is the energy I was waiting for. Let's, let's pick it up. Thank you, thank you. So long London, for real this time. Um, after that we have I Hate It Here. Where? Quick, quick, tell me something awful Like you are a poet Trapped inside the body of a finance guy Tell me all your secrets All you'll ever be is My eternal consolation prize You see I was a debutante In another life but That's kind of cruel My eternal consolation prize Second place I seem to be scared to go outside If comfort is a construct I don't believe in good luck Now that I know what's what I hate it here so I will go to Secret gardens in my mind People need a key to get to The only one is mine I read about it in a book When I was a precocious child No midside city Precocious, does that just mean curious? This song is kind of scary. Having developed certain abilities or, wait, or abilities of an adult as an unusually early age. That's probably a trauma response. You've been exposed to some shit. Hopes and small town fears. I'm there most of the year cause I hate it here. I hate it. Yeah, cuz 
because I'm questioning like where 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 where's here that she hates I was thinking London I was thinking LA being famous but now I think she just means in general being alive like she just hates being Taylor Swift would pick a decade we wish we could live in instead of this I'd say the 1830s but without all the races and getting married <laughs> off for the highest bid babe that's still going on now both of them being married off and the racism there's not a time in history you could go to that wouldn't have that shit tragic but without all the races and getting married off for the highest bid, everyone would look down because it wasn't fun now. Seems like it was never even fun back then. Nostalgia is a mind trick. If I'd been there, I'd hate it. It was freezing in the palace. I hate it here, so I will go to lunar valleys in my mind. Gentle survived. I dreamed about it in the dark the night. I felt like I might die. No mid-sized city hopes and small town fears. I'm there most of the year because I hate it here. I Literally, she's just imagining a better world, a better history, a better society, a better place for her to be, and only the good survive in those places. City hopes and small town fears. I'm there most of the year cause I hate it here I hate it here I'm lonely but I'm good I'm bitter but I swear I'm fine I'll save all my romanticism for my inner life And I'll get lost Oh, 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 oh. No, no, no. But we're leaving these situations. We're leaving these people, these places for somewhere better. Right? I'm lonely, but I'm good. I'm bitter, but I swear I'm fine. Or not. Or not. I'll save all my romanticisms for my inner life. I'll keep them internalized and I'll get lost on purpose. Great. In the happiness. This place made me feel worthless. Yes. Dreams like electricity. The current flies through me and in my fantasies I rise above it. I actually love it. I hate it here, so I will go to secret gardens in my mind. People is this song just about getting high? Get to. The only one is mine. I read about it in a book when I was a precocious child. No mid-sized city hopes and small town fears. I'm there most of the year because I hate it. Where is this safety net that she goes to? Because she wants to escape. No, I'm trying to figure it out. Because this place is like a paradise for her. Or an escape from her reality. Basically. And I'm trying to figure... Is it Mary Jane? Is it, you know, being on tour? Where is it? She's created this safe space in her mind. She says only she has the key to it. Like she's the, the queen of the Swifties? I'm wondering. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure it out. Quick, quick, tell me something off. Back to the beginning. Like you are a poet, trapped inside the body of a fine That's how we end the song? gives manic you're on your own kid if you're on your own kid was depressed depressing sad wretched that would be i hate it here at least you're on your own kid made me feel hopeful this one just made me feel like there's a paradise that i'll never reach and i'm just bound to this pitiful society the tortured poets department indeed
Ugh. I hate it here. It's like every song is just one dagger to another dagger to another dagger. Besides so high school, I don't I don't think we've had many happy moments on this album. We're we're for real tortured. She was tortured. Anyways, next we have Thank You Amy with again capital K and capital K I M. I don't know what's happening, but let's react. <laughs> When I picture my hometown, there's a bronze spray tan statue of you. Okay. And a plaque underneath it that threatens to push me down the stairs at our school. And it was always the same searing pain. But I dreamed that one day I could say All that time you were throwing punches I was building something Yeah, you were tearing your fan base Forgive the way you made me feel Scream fuck you Amy to the night sky As the blood was gushing But I can't forget the way you made me heal Oh, okay, so you were terrible to me And you made me feel like a lot of pain but at the same time, that pain is what made me grow into a stronger person. So fuck you, but also thank you. Interesting perspective, Taylor. Very mature. But also, I don't know who Amy is, but bitch, we're beefing. Fuck ya. Go to hell. Amy? As in, did she fall out with Abigail? I don't know if I can handle that. I don't know. Taylor does not strike me as a type of Easter egger to include the same first letter in the name she choose to represent someone. If she were talking about Abigail, she'd choose some random ass name like Mackenzie. Not Amy. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself to keep me from crying. And it wasn't a fair fight Or a clean kill Each time that Amy stomped across my grave And then she wrote headlines In the local paper Laughing at each baby step I take And it mm. was always Hometown hater The same searing pain But guess what? At the end of the day, Taylor got the last laugh. So... Gag on that, Amy. But I prayed that one day I could say All that time you were throwing punches I was building something And I couldn't wait to show you it was real Screaming Yeah! Flex on her! Night sky as the black was gushing But I can't forget the way you made me feel Heal! some steppers they'll all step on some necks okay amy you got the whole swifty clan after you you better run ho you better run for the hills run back to tennessee or pennsylvania whatever home you claim bitch but regardless you're not safe you got the whole swifty brigade after you good luck bitch everyone knows that my mother is a saintly woman <laughs>
Fuck that. I'm not giving Amy any credit for your success. Fuck you, Amy. And your mom. Whoever she is. And whoever you are. Beefing forever. Fuck you. Taylor is better than me. And maybe you've reframed it. And in your mind, you never beat my spirit black and blue. Mm -hmm. I don't think you've changed much. And so I changed your name and any real defining clues. She's getting messy. Taylor's getting messy. She's building it up. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Who's Amy? We're about to find out. She's about to give us some Easter eggs that aren't exactly Easter eggy because they're going to be explicit. And forget Easter. We're going to meet Jesus himself risen front and center. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Forget an Easter egg. Forget an Easter egg. She's about to be direct with the shots. I wish he would have done that with Jojo. He, he deserved a few more lashings, in my opinion, for what he put her through. But whatever. Right now we're going to beat Amy. Amy, bring that ass forward, bitch. One day... Your Where kid am I? comes home singing. Oh, you got kids? A song that only us two is gonna know is about you. Cause all that time you were throwing punches, it was all for nothing. And I town it looks so small from way up here. Scream thank you. And <gasps> Not only is she saying I'm successful, I'm at the very top of this hill that I was pushing that boulder up, but now she's looking down on you, Amy. And the town, that small town, that small mindedness that she had to grow up with, it looks so small now. Our town, hmm, the town does look so small. Because when you're in the town, it feels like that's all there is in the world. That is, that's what you're like surrounded by. That's what you can, that's your perspective of the world. But once you step out of that little bubble, you realize that all that shit is so min minuscule. Those people, their opinions, the little Walmart that you had up the street. Guess what? There's a million Walmarts around the world. I love this song. I love this song. To the night sky and the stars are stunning. Cause I can't forget the way you made me feel. Everyone knows that my mother is a saintly woman. But she used to say she wished that she was dead. So I pushed <laughs> each boulder up that hill. Your words were still. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. No. Fuck you, Amy. Fuck you, Amy. Hate you, Amy. Ugly, Amy. That's it? Oh. Yeah, no. I'm not a fan of Amy, and I don't care if she did help you heal. I hate her. How dare she? Disrespect. Just why be mean to anybody? Such a waste of time and energy. Um, after that we have, I look in people's windows. What? Voyeurism. I would say that this song is probably the the prettiest writing that I've seen so far. The prettiest. It's really cool. The imagery, the repetition, her voice. I love the folkiness of the guitar. I, I really like the song. I look in people's windows. Such a weird name though. I look in people's windows, chance fixed by rose gold and glows. They have their friends over to drink nice what? I look in people's she windows. wishes she had that in case you're at their table what if your eyes looked up and met mine one more time oh 
Taylor. So in just normal human, random human, stranger human interaction, she's still thinking about this dude. You had stopped and tilted your head. I still ponder what it meant. Now, 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 now. I tried searching faces on streets. What are the chances you'd be down, 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 down? She's like at the center of her world. Know me. I'm addicted to the if. Only so I so look cool. in people's windows like I'm some deranged weirdo. <laughs> I attend Christmas parties from outside. Taylor, you're gonna get yourself a case doing this shit. I know it's all just a metaphor, but imagine Taylor Swift really just like so sad and walking around downtown peeping in people's windows, trying to like fill that yearn she has for connection. She said, I attend other people's Christmas parties. They just don't know I'm there. Parties from outside. I look in people's windows in case you're at their table. What if your eyes looked up and met mine one more time? Taylor. Damn, girl. This dude did wrecked havoc on her. Jesus Christ. How do we go from we are never getting back together to depression? This is the same one woman who gave us all too well 10 minute version. So I'm actually not that surprised. It's just it's hitting way deeper this time. By the way, Jake Gyllenhaal, give her back her fucking scarf. Next up, we got the prophecy. What? This is like the fourth time we've heard this um, this count off. It's it's interesting that they kept it in. Oh, Jack Antonoff, no more. I should have known. I haven't heard a synth in a while. Aaron Dessner. Okay. reference even the apple but she is now getting but bitten by the snake and again the story of blaming eve or the woman for all a punishment in the world oh, was it punishment pat around when i get home i guess the lesser woman would have lost hope huh a greater woman wouldn't beg oh but i looked to the sky and said please i've been Jesus Christ, that is the saddest thing ever. Ugh. Begging this damn stars just for someone to want to be around you. She said, I don't even want the money. I want someone who would just enjoy my company. That's the bare minimum. Again, a, just a sad existence. I don't blame her for all the death references, man. Please, I've been on my knees. Change the prophecy. Don't want money, just someone who wants my company. That being said, Taylor, if you want to sell me a million, I'll happily accept. I, I must say. He let it once be me. Who do I have to speak? about if they can redo the prophecy cards on the table mind play out like fools in a fable oh it was sinking in sinking in oh. slow 
is the quicksand poison blood from the wound of the pricked hand oh still a dream of him oh what's that is it maleficent mine play out like fools in a fable we're literally talking about a fable the little pin thingy the pinwheel and then homegirl goes to sleep for forever Poison blood from the wound of the pricked hand. Slow as the quicksand. Oh, still I dream of him. Yeah, she's she is now what's the girl's name? Who falls asleep. I don't even remember. But y'all know the little nursery rhyme or whatever the heck it's called. Please I've been on my knees. Change the prophecy. Don't want money. Just someone who wants my company. Let it once be me. I have to speak to about if they can redo the prophecy and I sound like an infant feeling like the very last drops of an ink pen Whoa. a greater woman stays cool Whoa. but I howl like a wolf at the moon that feeling like the very last drops of an ink pen like when you're trying to force that shit to work my god when you have nothing else to give and I look Stable gathered with a coven round a sorceress table. A greater woman has faith, but even statues crumble if they're made to wait. Oh, that was that was the line that was um I don't know if she posted on an Instagram or where I saw it, but that was the chosen line. That was that was really nice to like see it now in the song. But also it makes I don't like that she's saying that she's a less of a woman for not leaving. Like you're you're still strong even if you stay, you know. I don't I don't like that idea that if you if you can't really make that break or make that move to leave officially, then that makes you weak or stupid or whatever. I don't think it's fair to judge others or yourself in that way. So afraid I sealed my fate. No sign of soulmates. I'm just a pain. Webster grayish a color between beige and gray oh actually it's kind of cute for all you earth tone hoes I like it though that just proves there will always be someone out there who likes your little shade of grayish be whatever shade of color you want there's someone who will like it less coin so someone will tell me it'll be okay that ain't my last and also, I had a dream my daughter-in-law killed me for the money. She has a lot of- she- it seems like she's very fearful that people just use her or want her for her money. But also she'd be willing to give her last dollar just to have someone around her. A weird experience. Uh, one that I can't even like- there's some things that I'm sure she's experiencing that we can't even fathom. <laughs> sad to like envision like oh she's finally got love again oh it's gone again it's like catch it lose it catch it lose it catch it lose it
I hate, I'm just imagining how down and low, isn't that a song? Down bad or something? Yeah. How low she must have felt during this time. And what it was JoJo's ass doing, because Lord knows he wasn't working. So where were you, London boy? Ugh. Anyways, next up we have Cassandra. I was in my new house placing daydreams Patching up the crack along the wall I pass it and lose track of what I'm saying Ooh. Cause that's where I- Was the prophecy a damn bonus song from the- Oh well. I think it was. Oh well. The Bolter. That's the one I gotta- was when I got the call When the first stone's thrown, they're screaming In the streets, there's a raging riot When it's burned, the bitch, they're shrieking oh. When the truth comes out, it's quiet And that's why you don't pay society or people on the internet any mind they're all fickle and stupid. Not you, of course. But the people on Twitter. Don't even pay them dust. So they killed Cassandra first Cause she feared the worst And tried to tell it sound mm. So they filled my cell with snakes I regret to say Do you believe me now? Oh, uh, snakes as in reputation era? Cassandra. So they killed Cassandra first because she feared the worst and tried to tell the town. So they filled my cell with snakes. I regret to say, do you believe me now? That she wasn't the bad guy? I was in my tower weaving nightmares. Another twisting all my fairy tale fable. Into snarls. They say what doesn't kill you makes you aware. Twisting all my smiles into snarls. Being the snake or villain that they're saying I am. Sting on my spine. Oh, oh no, it's all coming together. We're talking about reputation era. Cause even, um, I was, I locked myself up in my tower. During that time, didn't she like peace out for like a year? And then she came back with reputation. Reputation was her moment to come back. So her being in this tower of nightmares. Oh, I think, anyway, I'm just out here thinking as I listen, but I think she's talking about reputation era. Into snarls. They say what doesn't kill you makes you aware. What happens if it becomes who you are? It's not though. They made you look like that. So they killed Cassandra first because she feared the worst and tried to tell the town. So this is life in flames, I regret to say. Do you believe me now? Okay. They knew, they knew, they knew the whole time that I was on to something. The family, the pure greed, the Christian chorus line. They all said nothing. Blood's thick, but nothing like a payroll. That they never spared a prayer for my soul. now I thought we were talking about reputation now we're talking about Christianity and families bloodlines and payrolls what she, um oh god now I'm thinking Scooter Braun that tall ass Victoria's Secret giraffe lady and her husband's family Jesus, it could be a thousand things that she's talking about. I patched up the crack along the wall. I pass it and lose track of what I'm saying. Cause that's where I was when I lost it all. So they killed Cassandra first cause she feared the worst. They tried to tell the town. 
slowly filled my cell with snakes I regret to say Do you believe me now? I was on to something They all said nothing Blood's thick but nothing like a payroll Bet they never spared a prayer for Oh, is she talking about her own family? Damn. Did her own family sell her out? And they claimed to be like holier than thou Christians, but whenever things got bad and she was like in a dark place, they never checked on her, they never prayed for her. You can mark my words that I said it first in the morning warning. we would get context to like certain things like it's nice to interpret but it would I think it would hit so much harder like the songs if we actually knew who and what situation she was talking about sometimes um, like who the hell is Cassandra who the heck is Amy now we're about to talk about Peter unless who are the characters of Peter Pan Peter Pan, Captain Hook, Lost Boys, Tinkerbell, Wendy, Ty uh, yeah, we're not talking about these people. Okay, okay, never mind. Next up, we got Peter. said bring out the dictionary so I am charming or enchanting the goddess of timing so that she found us enchanting and charming okay once found us beguiling she once did so not anymore so she once thought they were great for each other but not anymore timing time ran out for them trying Peter was she lying my ribs get the feeling she did Just goodbye for now. You said you were gonna grow up, then you were gonna come find me. Said you were gonna grow up, then you were gonna come find me. Said you were gonna grow up, then you were gonna come find me. Words from the mouths of babes, promises, oceans deep, but never. When I mature, I'll, I'll date you. I'll put a ring on it. So she's just gonna sit around and wait for that to happen. And then when it finally does happen, you don't? Oh, you're sick. Oh, you're sick. scene stealer I've heard great things Peter but life was always easier on you than it was on me and sometimes it gets me when crossing your jet stream we both did the best we could do underneath the same moon and different galaxies 
that's a problem I wish I had. Huh, I wonder if this is um, Peter's plane emissions that we're driving through. I wonder if he'll cross through mine. <laughs> Taylor, what the heck? And I didn't want to hang around We said it was just goodbye for now You said you were gonna grow up Then you were gonna come find me said you were gonna grow up Then you were gonna come find me said you were gonna Ooh, she's grow repeating up, it Then you were gonna come find me Words from the mouths of babes Promises, oceans deep Never to keep Never to keep So then before we get to the bridge this one is again about Jojo and how he was not able to fulfill on his promises and be endgame with her She said, I was willing to wait for you. I, I was going to say, it's worth it for you to find yourself and come back to me. It was worth not having you. She said, all the dudes are lined up waiting for their chance, but I'm still waiting on you. Because love's never lost when perspective is earned. Like, I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. And that makes me love you more. But homie couldn't even, like, give her the benefit of the doubt. How dare he? You said you'd come and get me, but you were 25 and the shelf life of those fantasies is expired lost to the lost boys chapter of your life for okay a media reference lost boys i'm trying to get the full picture of what she's talking about so it's a movie with a vampire what, saxophone what the hell the film follows two teenage brothers who move with their divorced mother to the fictional town of santa, Cal santa carla california to discover that the town is something, whatever. Taylor, anyway. Give me Peter, please know that I try to hold on to the days when you were mine. But the woman who sits by the window has turned out the light. Love that. Okay, okay, okay. So instead of us being peeping toms, now we're at the window and we're like, I'm done waiting. Turn off the light. I love that. I love that. I love that. You said you were gonna grow up, then you were gonna come find me. Said you were gonna grow up. Mm. You said you were gonna grow up. Oh my god. You were gonna come find me. Said you were gonna grow up. You said you were gonna grow up, then you were gonna come find me. Said you were gonna grow up. So many things though, like she sat around waiting, wasted her time, she was in love with this dude. She sounds like she still is when she wrote the song. She's just heartbroken now. That's two things. Um, yeah. Now trust issues probably because people don't keep their word. Said you're gonna grow up and come find me. Wasted all that time. Freaking Peter. Ugh. Anyways, Robin. Or again, we're gonna react to the Bolter and the other bonus songs on Patreon. So next up we got Robin. Said you were gonna grow up. Blood thirsty out 
two levers slowed down clocks tethered all this showmanship to keep it for you in sweetness way to go tiger what I can't tell if this is a good song are you a good witch or a bad witch are we happy or are we sad are we complimenting this person or are we saying that are we saying something negative Wilder in the bedroom, lighter, skinny for you. Oh, I don't think this is a good. I don't think this is a good message. I don't think we're in a good. This isn't a good time. No, I don't think this is fun. This isn't a good time at all. Oh. And then again, back to JoJo, or allegedly, um, doing drugs, higher and higher, wilder and lighter for you. Jeez. They all knew about it. Uh, I don't know. dude just loves like the thrill of thrill of it all living on the edge being wild and dangerous and reckless jesus that's dangerous for not just them but for taylor too to be involved with that no the time will arrive for the cruel and the mean you learn to bounce back just like your trampoline but now we'll curtail your curiosity feels but also some of the writing feels almost childlike. Like a lot of childish references from the swing set, the trampoline. This feels, um, I wouldn't say immature, but it feels like I'm being, look, I'm, it seems like we're talking about children. Sweetness. Way to go, tiger. Way to go, tiger. Knuckle on his head. up would be the manuscript but I believe that is also a bonus track from the vinyls so now we're gonna go into part three of the torture post apartment my god she really gave us 30 something songs Jesus okay my opinion on the second I guess part of the torture post apartment I I think that it's cool I feel like it has the same emotion the same story but the poppiness of Jack Antonoff's version versus Aaron, I think it was Aaron Desser, um, the producer for the second part, 
Yeah, Aaron Des Desner. It's two completely different emotions. I would say the Aaron Desner um, 2 a.m. version is definitely more deep, and I feel like it evokes the, the emotions of the songs way more. Um, like, you can actually feel the pain that Taylor is writing about, like, through the music, through the sound of it. Um, but that being said, the one that I will be, like, having more fun streaming is definitely Jack Antonoff's version of Taylor's Emotions. Um, but anyways, if you made it this far into the video, comment favorite. You are the tortured poet CEO, and I will like your comment. And again, head over to Patreon so we can now react to the bonus tracks, because I'm wondering why were these specific songs, the Bolter, um, the Manuscript, and then we had also the Black Dog and the Albatross. Why were those chosen to be special songs? I'm, I can't wait to find out. So let's head over to Patreon now, link down below, and react. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> Bye.